morning. A bunch of beautiful faces out here this morning. Can we turn the ambient music down a little bit, please? You guys doing all right today? Boy, it's a beautiful day. It rained all morning. I love the rain. Because rain means warmer weather. I love that. Love that. So good what God's doing. Shelly, can you turn those lights up all the way? It's that top button. Thank you. Okay. Now, just hold it and it'll come up. Wow. God's doing some amazing things. I don't know if any of you have been out in the city walking the streets and seeing what's going on, but lives are being changed. People are being one. Homeless people are coming in. People are meeting them and talking to them, reaching out to them. Other churches, not just here. There's other churches, other things are going on. I'm so excited this morning. So thankful for what God's doing in this place. The shift that he's making. Guys, anytime there's a shift, it's just going from one level to the next. It's going from glory to glory, from a better place to a better place, an even better place. So thankful for the youth center, everyone that poured in and helped with that. You know how I am. I'm a, I budget stuff out fairly good, and, and uh, I got most of the work done over there for what it was going to cost me to get the drywall finished. So um, I pushed them pretty hard. It's my two sons, two of my sons, and I pushed them really hard, and they, they work hard, and it's kind of like a competition. We homeschooled them. It was kind of like a competition. They each did better because they competed against each other. That's kind of what they did in there. I was like, well, who can do this faster? That's how they did it. So they just did a great job, so thanks to them. Todd, you guys don't know Todd, but he's right over here, standing over here, and I know he don't like to be, he don't like that, but... I want you to know that it, Todd's taken every bit of piece of trash out of here. <laughs> Him and Rachel have, have loaded it in their truck. I mean, I've not had to worry about getting trash out of here because they have taken it to the dump every time. And, and uh, they've loaded it and unloaded it. So I'm so thankful for that. And every one of you, there's so many of you that have helped with this I'm behind the scenes and everything. So just thank you. Financially, you guys have paid for this. This is your thing. This is your property. This is your building. Thank you for the finances that have come in to pay for what God's doing, what he wants to do in this region. I was going a different direction this morning with my message. And I got to the gas station where I go every morning to get a cup of coffee. And that's a ministry spot for me to go minister. And, and my friend was there. David, I don't know if you guys know David or not. But David was there. And I've been developing the relationship with him. Every morning I would go up there and he would be up at the gas station and I would tell him how much I love him, tell him how much Jesus loves him. And I would get cussed out sometimes and sometimes I would get a smile. Sometimes I would get a babbling of words. I've sat down with him and I've there's been three or four different conversations that we've had because I had to change it as we were going because his personality changed. And I'm so thankful that God is doing the work in him. A few weeks ago, I was walking out and I didn't see him in there and I was walking out and I got a tap on my shoulder. And he reached out to give me a hug. And I hugged him. And this morning, he was in there and he was talking into the air. And I said, Good morning, David. And his smile just lit up on his face. And I went over and I talked to him. I said, man, we're having a revival. We're having an immersion revival. And I know you don't know what that is, but man, God wants to meet with you. He wants to talk to you. I told him the dates and the times. I don't know if he'll remember, but we're going to try to get him here. This would be a great thing to get him here, get him in the water. If you guys know who I'm talking about, he's been in this region for a long time. Felt like it's kind of my personal mission to reach out to this man. The enemies just devoured him, devoured him. So I'm thankful that I have the opportunity. So in that, with that being said, if you have your Bibles, 
Turn to Matthew. Actually, Mark, sorry. Let me see where I'm at here. Mark chapter 4. Starting with verse 35. Yes, there. So on the same day, when the evening had come, he said to them, I remember Jesus was, he was praying with a bunch of people on the seashore. He went out into the waters, the boat, because the sound travels on the water better, and the people in the crowd, in the, in the land can hear better, because the water, is something about the water, the sound travels peace of God is on them. So much about what God's getting ready to do in this region with the water. Where he's going to meet us. And he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took along, they took him alone in a boat and the other boats were there with him. See, there's a bunch of boats around. Have you ever been to any boat, boating event in the water where there's one boat, there's a bunch of boats? They were all around him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. Can you imagine being out in the water? The waves are beating to the side of the boat, and the boat starts to fill up with water. What's going through your mind? But Jesus... Verse 38 said, but he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. Everything was getting crazy and Jesus was sleeping. I want you to know that no matter what you're going through in life, nothing should steal that from you. The peace of God to be able to rest, no matter what kind of trials going on, no matter what kind of tribulations going on in your life, to be able to rest in that and know that he has you, that he's covered you. See, he wanted them to go to the other side. And sometimes stepping to the other side means stepping out of the sin that you're living in. Into the revelation that he has for you. Into the holiness that he wants you to walk into. But he was asleep. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I mean, they're in this boat thinking they're getting ready to die. I know I was with Quinn out on the boat. We was not too long ago for a Trump rally. And uh, it got pretty crazy out there. All the boats going, it was just, it got pretty crazy. And, uh, but man, we were having a blast. But these guys thought they were dying, so it must have been really terrible. And sometimes in your life, there's things that are going on that you think are so bad that you're going to die. If you keep pressing in, you keep pushing in, you watch what God's going to do in that and through that. Watch what happens. Get to the other side. No matter what it's going to take, get to the other side, because that's what Jesus wants us to do. Get to the other side of your life, what you're doing right now, and move into what he has for you. Move into what he wants for you. We're perishing. And he arose and rebuked the winds and said to the sea, peace, be still. See, peace has a name. He just said, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? See, Jesus has already fulfilled all these different things. He's already fed multitudes of people with just a few loaves of bread. He's already did all these things. And yet they're still super fearful. They're fearful for their lives, not knowing that God is going to save them, that Jesus is going to save them. They feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be 
See, they already knew who it was, but they're still questioning who this is. Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Then they came to the other side, the sea. I want you to know when you come to the other side, it's not going to be all daisies and roses sometimes. The enemy is going to meet you there too. He's going to take you from one bad place and God's going to take you to that good place, but the enemy is going to meet you there. So don't stop there. Don't stop there because some people stop too short of where God wants them to go. And when they press in, they say, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you my life, Jesus. And they press in and then the enemy tries to attack them again. They stop because they they thought that it was going to be just all easy to step to the other side. It's going to be like a bed of roses. No, it's not. It's not going to be. I'm telling you right now. But Jesus is with you. When you're living in sin and you trade that for holiness, Jesus is walking with you. Because he wants a deep, intimate relationship you, with you. He's going to do whatever it takes. And when they had come out of the boat, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. No one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. No one could tame him. It's a pretty violent man to be shackled and chained and just stab him. That's pretty powerful. But Jesus is the chain breaker too. He's the ultimate chain breaker. Yeah. Where the enemy might break chains. I want to tell you guys, there's nothing you can do in this world that's going to suppress the enemy that he's not going to be able to break through that. Except for Jesus. That's the only thing that's going to hold the enemy down and keep him from you. Keep him from controlling your life and taking your life over. That's the only thing that's going to happen. only thing you're going to be able to do is go to Jesus. Some of you, some of you guys have experienced trying to weigh the sin that you were in with another sin. And you've tried to maneuver around it and make it look good when it still stunk. And that's what it means to try to just hold the enemy down with another type of a sin. Some people would drink and stay drunk because they don't want to feel the pain of the sin or whatever they went through in life. Some people would do drugs. Some people would just do, there's just so many things we can name that they'll do instead of giving Jesus their life. It is always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshipped him. I don't know which one it was of the demons that were in him because it's a legion of demons. But I believe it was the, the true man that come to worship Jesus. That come to worship him. And every time I talk with David and I see that smile, I know that's David smiling at me. I know that's David to come up, tap me on the shoulder and hug me. He's crying out for help. How many people do you know that are crying out for help without saying the words, help me. Help me. Cutting themselves. Help me. got a phone call this week from one of my friends I grew up with most of my friends I grew up with didn't get into good things I could have been right where they are I was at one time this is one of my best friends that we run around all the time this whole family two years ago I was on a bounty 
If you don't know, I was a bounty hunter. I was out on a stakeout. It was about midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. And he came to my mind, and I messaged him out of the blue. I just, I hadn't talked to him forever. Just tried to find out where he was, and I, I, I found out where he was on Facebook, and I sent him a message and messaged him. His girlfriend got the message. She knew I was an ex-cop, so she didn't let him get the message. She, she kept responding back to me, and I thought it was him, but she kept responding back to me that he didn't want to talk to me because I'm an ex because I'm an ex-cop and I'm a bounty hunter now. And I didn't know after that stakeout that night, he had messaged me. I just now, I just now found that out. He messaged me and told me that it was his girlfriend that did that, that he wanted to talk to me. A few days later, he was shot 12 times. two years ago and I just now found that out the opportunity was stolen from me we can't let no more of it happen we can't let no more opportunities be stolen from us I believe if we get David saved, it's when this town will be flipped upside down. I really do. I really do believe that. Because people are going to say, what happened? What happened to that man? Ain't that the man that ran around town screaming and hollering in the wind? And he's going to say, yes, I was, but I love Jesus now. I know Jesus. That's what I'm believing in. That's what I'm believing in right now. What do I have to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you, by God, that you do not torment me. For he said this, after Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him extremely that he would not send them out into the country. Now, a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountain. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter them. See, the demons know who Jesus is. They know that one day that it's done for them. They want to get every little bit of life they can get they said just send us into the swine and once Jesus gave them permission he gave them permission in order for the enemy of this world have to have control in your life you have to give him permission Acting on a temptation is giving him permission. Falling through with the temptation that the enemy puts before you is giving him permission. That needs to stop. That needs to stop. Then the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine. There were about 2,000. That's why he could break all them chains. About 2,000 of them inside of one man. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled and they towed it to the city and the country. 
they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. He was clothed in his right mind after Jesus grabbed a hold of him. After the demons left. I want you guys to know that you're going to be able to be in your right mind when you step away from the things of the enemy. When you step away from the things of this world that's holding you down, that's binding you down. You're going to be in your right mind. Verse 18, it says, And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. See, this man wanted to come with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but he said to him this, Go home to your friends. Can you imagine a demon-possessed man with 2,000 demons in him having friends? You know, I, could, I, I can't even imagine that. You know, I caught that this morning, you know. But how many of you know someone who's hooked on drugs that has a bunch of friends that are hooked on drugs? That are in the same place they are. Doing the same thing they're doing. And this, this guy had friends like that. Doing the same things. And I don't know, the Bible doesn't talk about it, but Jesus said, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you. And now he has compassion on you. And he departed again and proclaimed. Decapolis, I guess that's how you pronounce that. All that Jesus had done for him. And all marvel. So it's said that this whole region was changed because of this one man. Can you imagine... Can you imagine when we get this one man to the cross of Jesus, to the feet of Jesus, what it's going to do to the city? How many of you know who I'm talking about? If you don't know, come spend the night with me. We'll go up there in the morning. You can meet him. He's a really neat guy. He's really a handsome guy. He's got a nice beard, better than I could grow one. I see what Jesus sees in him. I see the man that Jesus called him to be. That's what makes it so easy to go up to him. And I understand that some of you might be fearful to go up to someone like that that's uh, cussing at you one minute and then smile at you the next. It was a time that wouldn't have been easy for me to do. But it is now, it's becoming more and more easy. Because I know who I am. The more I know who I am, the more I know who he is. And who I need to become to be able to minister to people who are possessed with demons without fear. I don't want to fear anything that man has or anything that the enemy has to throw at me at all. A lot of people fear man. Get rid of it. What can they do, the Bible says, kill you? That's a bonus. If you're right with Jesus, that's a bonus. You just get to enter into heaven. How many of you have someone in your life like this that you want someone to come and minister to that they, they're not hearing the voice, your voice? They might have someone that's not hearing their voice. They have someone that they want to come to them. So the rest of you, your families are all good, and you guys are all ministered to them great. And I think every hand should have been up with that. But um, 
well, maybe you're not understanding my question. Is there someone in your life that you cannot minister to that someone else needs to minister to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank Jesus for that. So we're going to take a moment. We're going to press into that person. And you call them out under your breath by name, who they are. And we're going to pray for them. We're going to ask God to just intercede for them. We're going to ask the heavenly angels to intercede for them. Our warring angels to come down and war on their behalf. The battles that they're going through. Jesus wasn't received in his own city. And you're not going to be received in yours sometimes. Last service we talked to some of the people that are, were here that have been contending in this region for so many years. Pressing in for so many years. Waiting for God to do something miraculous. And this is the time. I believe this is the time that he's going to tear this city apart for good. For good. He's unveiling things. Things are being exposed. Things are being uncovered. Things that have been covered up for years are being uncovered. There's a lot behind what I'm saying, but there, there's a lot that's happening right now in the city. The politics. Politicians. Different people. There's just things happening. And God's moving. He's rattling the cages. Things are shaking. It's a good thing. Don't ever think it's a bad thing that this shaking's going on. It's a good thing. It's a good thing what God's doing. Darling, would you come up here with me and grab a mic? my darling and just lead this prayer out so whoever you guys have we're going to all pray together but whoever you have that you need prayer for you just you can just call that name out loud or under your breath or whatever you want to do but call that name out and we're going to pray for those people that are called out today those people like David that, that needs someone to come into their life someone to talk to him, someone to minister to him where they won't hear your voice but they'll hear their voice we need people to come in our lives like that. We're not going to be able to reach them all, but there are people out there that will reach them. And that's what we're contending for. That's what we're asking God to do this morning. Amen. Thank you, Father. You know each name. So I just invite you now to call that name out. Yes. Whisper it. Jerry. However you want to say it. If you want to say it loud. Dusty. Father, you hear Dusty. every voice. You know every heart. You know the ones that they're talking about. You know the ones that are dear to their hearts or more dear to yours. My. Father, we call them out. Lord, we pray for divine connections, Gross. divine opportunities, Jesus. divine relationships yes. to form, Jesus. that you would send people to each and every one of who we have in our, on our hearts, Lord, no. to speak truth to, to call the gold out of them, to speak life into, Father, ones that will listen. You know who they will listen to. You know who their heart's going to line up with. So, Father, close doors. If there's doors that have been opened and have stayed open a long time, Lord, close those doors that they may not go back through them, that they will just continue to move forward to the doors that you've opened. Divine appointments, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for right now for what you are going to do. We already know that you hear our prayers, and every prayer... Doesn't, it, doesn't fall on deaf ears. We praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for our sons and our daughters. Our lost loved ones. You know them all by name. Every one of them. They won't hear us because of the familiarity of it, of us. They know too much about us, but there's some people they don't know too much about that would be able to minister to them. My friend Andrew told me, that's why you have to be careful who your friends are. So when they get to know you too well, they don't listen to you no more. So if you're wanting to minister to someone, you probably shouldn't be their friend in that way. They're probably not going to listen to you after a while. 
take your advice. I know there's some here that need prayer this morning. I know we're a little early this morning. That's okay. I don't mind cutting it short. I don't mind at all. I just want to take this time to press in, guys. we got the revival coming up. It's really nothing to do with the water. What it has to do with is Jesus meeting us in the water. That's what's going to happen. He's going to meet us in the water. Two different times in the Bible that there was water, there was pools. One of them, a man was waiting beside the pool. couldn't get in because of his physical element and Jesus come told him to rise up take up his bed and walk but he did another time there was a blind man Jesus spit in the mud and made some clay stuck it on his eyes and said go wash your eyes out in the pool and he went to the pool and washed his eyes out and he could see that's what God's going to do in this revival I want you guys to come, and I want you to invite someone to come. I don't care if we have to stand up in this whole place. I really don't. I would rather see that because watch what's going to happen. This is a start to what God's doing, us saying yes to this. Don't take it for granted what he's doing because it's just going to be amazing. What's going to happen in here in this water is going to be such a cleansing of the bride a cleansing of this city like we've never seen it's not even about Todd as great as he is it's about his yes it's about his yes and it's about your yes I expect this place to be overpacked it's not we're not doing something right you just gotta bring one person and we'll be there there's people coming from Ohio other states that are going to be here so this is not a light thing if you can help we're going to need your help okay it's important to me that we continue to walk in what God has for us and continue to say yes to him yes to what he wants for us How many of you didn't get in the water last time? How many of you been in the water? I mean, some of you haven't. Be prepared to get in. Whatever is happening in your life, whatever's going on in your life, bring it and leave it in the water. My nephew just called me last night. They're having trouble with their marriage. And he said, what's going to happen if we come and get in the water? That's just going to change your world. It's going to change your life. So they're both going to come to get in the water. And I'm so thankful. So thankful that they're seeing from a distance what's going on. There's people watching from a distance. Jeremy knows that. There's people watching. They're waiting on the sidelines to see. I told you guys they're waiting on the sidelines to see. And it's going to be a big rush at one time, I'm telling you, because they're going to see what's going on, seeing the love of Jesus here, how Holy Spirit stays here. Let's pray, and I want you guys to come and pray at the altar. And I want you to come up here, I want you to come up here and, and be real with God. press in the rest of you I just want you to press into what God's getting ready to do just press in and for the next 10 minutes if we could give it 10 minutes and put us at 25 after you can all come and pray up here I'm sure everybody's got one thing they need to give to God 
pray in your front chairs. Just make it something different than you've ever done before. Make it a way of prayer different. Instead of just sitting there, if you stand and pray or if you kneel and pray, but make it something different than what you're used to. You know, I could stay in my bread bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. I could stay there and, and, and pray in my bed, but, but I have to get up and go in the other room because I'm making that transition. I'm moving to the other side so I can press into what he has for me. And that's what we need to do. Let's press in this morning. I'm not going to make you. I'm just going to tell you it's going to bless your life. Father, we thank you this morning for what you've done. Father, thank you for the piercing of the heart, Lord, this morning. That you are an amazing God. That you are a loving God. That you love us so much that you see our future. You see what's in front of us. God, you see the things that are going to trip us up. You try to give us a way out, Lord. You try to move us right or left, Lord, when we want to go straight. Thank you, Father, that you are changing our lives, that you're moving in our lives in a way that we've never seen before. Thank you, God, that you love us that much, that you created us in the image of love, that we reside in love because we are love. I thank you, Father, for that this morning. Thank you for the city. I thank you for the pastors in this region, God. Lord, bless each one of them. You know them. You know their fire. You know their zeal. God, some of them, their zeal has been snuffed out by people. Lord, I ask that you would just bring that fire back into their lives and they would just light up. They would light up and be on fire for you and do it the way you want to do it, Lord, not the way they want to do it. They would see it how you see it, not how they see it. They would walk in your holiness and your goodness. Thank you, Lord, again for David. If you guys don't know, he's a mighty warrior. But he gets through this, that's going to come out. He's going to be greater than, I believe, any of the pastors of this town, including me. my heart take him to that level take him to that level that God sees him at let him see himself there so good thank you Father thank you Jesus anybody here deal with migraines I don't mean just a headache every now and migraines one here got one there migraines can you guys come up here you if you don't mind if you have migraines you just come right up front here we're going to demonstrate the power of God. We're going to, we're going to get rid of this stuff. You can do that. You don't have to. I'm not talking just little headaches. I'm talking migraines. Yes. You have her, You want to have her come out? You want to have them come out? up here.
all these people have migraines too. Anybody have a headache right now? He does. Anybody else? I know they come and go. And McClary has migraines too. Shelly just told me. Let's pray for her as we're doing this. It has no authority. In Jesus' name, migraine, you have to leave. You can't come back. Peace, come and reside. Fill this place. of heaven right now, Jesus. Thank you for the price that was paid on Calvary. For this migraine, for this woman. It's not in heaven, so it's not in us. In Jesus' name, pain leave right now. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Go on, Jesus. have to leave. Peace, replace it. Stillness, replace it. But they can't come back and find a void spot. Thank you, Jesus, right now. Go through his whole body, Lord Jesus. Go through his whole body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. to leave right now in Jesus' name. You have no authority. <coughs> Migraine, leave right now in Jesus' name. Fill it with peace. Fill it with joy, happiness, wholeness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for pain being gone right now. Jesus. 
Ricky, how you feel? Better? You still got pain? You do stay there. You good? You still got pain? Huh? Dull? Better than it was? Scale of 10 to 1, what? 10 being the worst. 1 or 2. Let's take it down to zero. Let's take it down to zero. Jesus. Guys, pray with me. Put your hands out. Jesus, thank you right now for pain leaving. Thank you, Lord, for peace coming right now. Lord, the light won't bother him. The light won't bother his eyes. The light will fill him with your glory, Jesus. Thank you right now. Father, go. Hallelujah. You feel that heat? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, shit. Sure, see you. How you feel now? Like a one. <clears throat> Who got healed? Which one of one of you get another person come up here? We're gonna finish this off. I'm gonna let you finish this off. Keep leaving. Keep moving. Better than it was? Oh, awesome. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I saw that. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> All right, guys. We went over this a little bit. Love you guys. Don't forget the revival's coming up. Thursday and Friday, intercessory prayers at 6 o'clock. 7 o'clock, the service starts. If you got people you want to come and, and, and they're Want, need to be able to sit down in the service, try to get them here a little earlier, um, and that way they'll be able to have a seat for the service. And so we just thank you guys for being here today. Love you guys. In Jesus' name, have a great week.